Hey there everybody, it's Nathan Cool with NathanCoolPhoto.com and you probably couldn't help but notice in 2021 that there's a new feature in Lightroom that's replacing brushes with a new masking feature and everybody in the photography realm and bloggers and vloggers were talking about how great this is, except for me. And I wanna address that today because I'm gonna show you some simpler alternatives and why I wasn't a fan of Lightroom, Adobe, going this route with this level of complexity. What I'm starting to see, and you might have started seeing over the last few years also, is that some of the Adobe products are starting to suffer from feature-itis. This is a common problem in software applications in general, where they start reaching beyond their expansion of scope, and they become something that they were not originally intended to do. So some of the features, and I'm going to cover those here, showing Lightroom and then the alternative using Photoshop to take care of that, when you're wanting something simple, just uh, I just want to move a few sliders, I just maybe want to add a brush and maybe just a simple gradient on here, one or two. I don't need a whole lot of this because I just need a few simple things that if I tried to use Photoshop, it was so difficult. But now with what Lightroom is throwing in there, well, some of this is actually easier to do in Photoshop and that's why I want to show you how to do that. It's also a lot more flexible and I always preferred doing these particular edits this way anyway. So I'm going to show you that and some better alternatives using Photoshop. Also another thing that came out last year was the replacement of the split toning panel for something that I'm not a fan of and that's the color grading panel. Now I use color grading and these color wheels all the time. When I'm doing video. I show that in my book on, on video. I show that on other tutorials and that's different. But color grading, when it comes to still images, trying to use Lightroom, I'm going to show you a much easier way and a much more flexible way, once again, to do that in Photoshop. So you ready to get started? Let's go. So this is the image that we're going to work with, which could have just some simple slider adjustments made in Lightroom to take some of the highlights down, bring some of the shadows up so we could overcome some of those areas that we saw that were a little bit on the blown out side over here. We can see the histograms way far to the right, but the sky is good. The house is a little bit deep in shadows. There's also a little bit of color cast of green coming up from the grass on the white wall here. So these are things that would be ideal for using the mask and also the uh, color grading options in Lightroom. But as I mentioned, those things are more difficult in Lightroom than what you could just do in Photoshop. Let me show you an example. So now if we wanted to, let's say, increase the shadows of the house, we'll do that first. And we'll do the same thing then when we go over to Photoshop. If I wanted to do that, I could take a brush and maybe increase the shadows. Well, now the brush is over here under this thing called masking. So there's different things here. I'm not going to get into all of them. You could select a luminance range and color range, and these things are not as accurate as what you could do in Photoshop, which I'm going to show you. But the simple thing like we used to be able to do was just grab a brush. So let's grab a brush and let's make that brush a little high on the shadows. Now what I can do is I can brush that area in there. If I want to see where it's being brushed, now I can click this little thing up here, which is showing me all my layers in a way, it's a, they're calling them masks, then I can click this on and off or hit O on the keyboard. So I can see, am I just brushing in to that shadowed area and turn that off. Then I can make my adjustments as I need to. So that that's fine. Now we want to make another one. And let's say it's just to get rid of the highlights on the cement. So now what you do is you go create new mask. You'd select brush again, and then what you want to do with the brush. So let's say that we want to take the highlights down. So now I take that brush and I brush over that concrete area that has too much. Now I could then make the other adjustments. Is that too much uh, reduction in highlight? Do I want to do something different? But I want now another one for the pool that reduces that because I don't have a lot of flexibility here to say I, I want to selectively erase some of this would be over the pool, something that I can do in Photoshop. So it's best just to make a new mask, in this case, a new brush, and then we'll do just a little bit of highlight reduction. And I could also, if I wanted to, let's say up the saturation a little bit, and then I would brush that in over here on the edge of the pool. So those are things that I can do here, and then I 
d would not be able to, and this is one of the biggest problems, I'd not be able to return to this very easily unless I kept all of this loaded on some drive with all the sidecar files. If I want to come back to this a year later, there really isn't any retention of this that's very well organized compared to if I were to be in Photoshop and just save a Photoshop file. So anyways, the options are here to do this, but with that alone, that's a reason why I'd rather use Photoshop, but also this is just more difficult. It's not as flexible as what I'm going to show you in Photoshop. The other issue here before going over to Photoshop is that we do have that green color cast. It's coming off of this grass, and so you could use the color wheels. And just really quickly, if you've never seen these used before, you would take one of the ranges of the tonal range, midtones, shadows, or highlights, and you would take the center of the wheel and drag it to the color that's more appropriate. In this case, we want to get rid of green, so we want to take it down toward red and blue in those shadows. And you could play with that as much as you need to, and you could kind of do that. Now, that is though a global selection, so that's a little bit difficult to try to do masking and all that. So once again though, this is just more complicated than it has to be for using Lightroom to do this compared to Photoshop, so let's go over there. So in Photoshop, first let's address the back of the house here. And let's just zoom out just a little bit here. So we'll take a look yeah, right about there. That way we'll be able to see all the edits that I'm doing. First with the house, what I would do is instead of using a brush to try to figure out, go in there, there really is no good object selection in Lightroom. But here I'm just going to select the quick selection tool. Then I can select the back of the house in that shadowed area. If I selected too much, I would click Alt and press that quick selection tool. And it knows by using some kind of artificial intelligence what it should select and what it should not. Now I can, with this selected, make an adjustment layer that will use this area masked, just like Lightroom was trying to create a mask, we go up here and say layer, new adjustment layer, brightness and contrast, and now it created that adjustment layer with that mask already made, but it was selected by using some better artificial intelligence. Now, I just up the brightness then, you can see on this adjustment layer, and I can do it as much as I want to, and it's only affecting that area. So, so far so good. I could do some shadow adjustments, all that, and the same thing, but brightness adjustments does a pretty good job. A little bit too much on that? No, well, just lower it. That's all you have to do. Do it to your liking, but this gives you the flexibility of what you want to do. Next, let's address those two highlight areas that we were talking about. An easy way to do that is to duplicate your original layer. So I'm going to do that. I'll just do Control J, which duplicates that layer. Now, what I want to do is work with a masked selection. So what I can do is add a layer mask by going to Layer, and then to Layer Mask, and Reveal All, which will make a layer mask that's white that shows everything. Now, this is a hidden feature that a lot of people don't realize is there, is the way you can select masks in, in, intuitively with some little bit of artificial intelligence, but really the way that Photoshop can detect different ranges that Lightroom was trying to mimic. Just double click now on your mask. When that comes up, you have this little button here called color range. When you select color range, there's different things you could do. Now, you've probably seen me use color range on doing sky swaps. Well, here there's other options. Under the Select drop-down, we're going to select Highlights. There, there's our highlights selected. Now, we can also say None, so we don't have to worry about what we're seeing. We can see it in the little preview right here. But let's go back to grayscale so we can get a really good idea of the highlights that we want to select. So I can select how much of the highlights I want to select. It's like, well, let's really go to town, or do we want to select very little of the highlights? How much feathering do we want between those highlights? Well, that's what fuzziness is. You know, do we bleed a little bit over there? So how much of that do we want? It's kind of like a feathering, that fuzziness. Okay. Now, once we have that, we can say, okay. And you can see that it made that mask. Now I can take the layer, click on the layer, and I can go up to Filter, I can go up to Camera Raw Filter, and now I can make a bunch of adjustments. Now, 
This, as you probably know, is just basically Lightroom, but simplified, back to the way it used to be in the old days. So that's a little overexposed in that area. So what I would do is I'd drop that down. Let's say that we drop that down to, oh, about a half stop. That should do it, right about there, okay? And uh, that's close enough. Once we have that down to about a half stop, we can click OK, and that adjustment now is applied only to where it was masked. So this is before, and this is after. Now, did we have too much reduction in highlights in other places that we don't want? We can go back here to that mask and hit Control click, and we get marching ants where that mask is. So we can see all the areas that did get masked. Control D deselects. So if I want to bring back some of these highlights over here, I can select the mask, make sure that my colors are black and white by hitting D, and then, which is the default colors, using then an eraser with about a 30% flow, I can then lightly erase some of these highlights out of that area. And if that was too much, then of course I can just go back and deselect that. I'll go up here and just erase some of that off those chairs that were there in the, and also back off here. So now I've got a lot more flexibility on what I'm doing with that selection. Also, by the way, if I wanted to increase some of the shadows on the back of the house like we were doing, well, that's also an easy thing. If I duplicate that layer, and in, when I add that layer mask to it, which will do a layer mask reveal all, I can also go in here and with that color range, I can select things like shadows, midtones, whatever I'd like. So I can select just the shadows and I can do something then with just that shadowed area, okay? But we're fine with what we're doing here, so we'll just leave that off. Now the color grading portion of it, this is also very simple. What I want to do is I'm going to use this color picker tool down here to see where we are, and you'll see the problem. If I select on the house, you can see it's predominantly like a, a bluish tint to it from the sky reflecting off of the white. If I go down here, I'm into the green tones. This is coming from the grass. It also happens up here near the top of the house. Okay. So now what I want to do is I want to have a, an adjustment layer here to adjust those colors. So to adjust the colors, instead of using the color grading wheels over in Lightroom, we can use a color range. And we can use a color balance adjustment layer. So what we do is we'd add first this layer. We can go to new adjustment layer and color balance. And in here, we can adjust a lot of different things with the, uh, with the shadows, the midtones, whatever. We'll just put it on shadows for right now. So now what I want to do though is select a color range. So let's go over here to the mask and let's go to color range. Now it's showing us shadows. What we want to do is select a sampled color. Now to do that, you have to make sure also that you're sampling all layers. So what we'll do is we'll go in here and we can click any color. We can see where some of that cast could be. So we know that the cast is around here and it's probably a little too much. So we'll tone that down just a little bit to there. So now we can see that that's that area that we were sampling that had that green tint to it. So let's just click OK. Okay, now that we have that and just that area selected, we can go and double click on the properties icon. It brings us back to here and we can select a lot of stuff. We can select shadows here. We can say that let's reduce the green and take it down so that we have a little bit more red in there. It's also going to have a little bit of yellow because greenish yellow. So let's bring the blues up a little bit. And then we can maybe bring this down a little bit and then we can keep sampling the colors. We can go over here to our color picker and as long as we have all layers sampled, we can start sampling some of the colors across the house. So once we get all those adjustments done, we're fine with our color grading and with all the masking that we wanna do where we would normally use brushes in Lightroom. You could finish this whole thing off in Photoshop also. Now, you could flatten this, but if you want to save it for later, you can duplicate all of these layers. Now, all that you have to do is go up to the top, and then you would do Control 
Alt Shift E. So Control Alt Shift E makes a copy of all the layers. You can see if I turn that on and off, it doesn't look like it's doing much, but that's because all these other layers are on. We'll just shut those off. You can see that's on or off. I'll turn these back on though. Now what we can do is add our final punch to it. And that's simply by going up to Filter, going to Camera Raw Filter, and then once again, it's like Lightroom Simplified. So I could go over to one of my presets that I have and select something here. Like let's say that I wanted to do my exterior 5K preset. Go back up here to my sliders and say, yeah, let's bring down the highlights more, too much increase in the shadows and whites. And that's starting to look good. I could up the saturation just a tad if I wanted to, and then we're done. So that's the whole thing once it's finished. So once again, we started with this, which had a lot of problems with things blown out, wasn't very bright, also had a little bit of color cast. And when we finished, then it looked like this. With Lightroom starting to feature from a bit of software bloat, getting this featureitis, it's becoming more complicated than it has to be. Now there are a lot of other alternatives to using Lightroom, and I talk about those in some other videos, links to those in the description for the video. But we can do so much more in Photoshop that if Lightroom continues to put a lot of these features in there, now would be the time to up your game a little bit on learning a few of those things. So that's my recommendation here. Not a fan of the direction that Lightroom is taking with trying to add some of this complexity in there, but there's always a way to make your pictures pop just using these features in Photoshop. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope that you can use some of this in your photography as well. If you did like this video and you want to see more, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel. It won't cost you anything. And as soon as one of these videos is posted, you'll be the first to know. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time, take care, be safe, and get out there and shoot something.